we wanted to ask you um, if you could just talk a little bit about where you grew up. Okay, so I was born in China and I grew up in China, but I I moved around in China. Uh, so my birthplace is in northern part of China. It's a little town on the border of China and North Korea. So I was born there and uh, until I I turned to three, my parents, they moved to the, a city called Zhengzhou, it's in the center of the China. So I, I, I went to that city until I turned to six. And then my parents decided to send me back to my hometown for school because they feel like school in that town is not very good. So I went back to my hometown in the north, north part of China. I lived there for two years. And then later on, my parents, they moved to the southern part of China. It's a city called Xiamen. Mm -hmm. So this is a city on the seaside. So I moved to that city when I turned to eight. And then I lived in that city for 10 years until I turned to 80. I finished my high school and then I went to France. So this is my whole story of my childhood. Wow. And so you started in China? Yeah. Eight years, and then you moved? Uh, no. You moved a couple times before you were eight. Yes, yeah, so I, I was born in northern part of China, then I moved to the cent central part of China, mm -hmm. then I go back to northern part of China for school for two years. And then when I was ten years, eight years old, sorry, I moved to the southern part of China. And then I stayed at city for ten years, and then I go to France. So let's start with those early cities that you moved. What, okay. was, what was your first memories of growing up in China? Uh, so I think I firstly have memory of my childhood was when I was three years old. Uh -huh. Yeah, so uh, I was living in a town um, which is very close to North Korea, but I had no, I, had, I have no idea what is North Korea. Uh, but my memory before Four years old was not very much, so I cannot remember so many things. Yeah. Until I attended four or five years old, I moved to a town called Zhengzhou, it's in the central part of China. It's I went to kindergarten, and I started to have some friends who have fun together with me. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so I spent three years in that town. I rem the biggest thing I remember <laughs> is, I don't like to go to kindergarten, I just like to stay at home and watch TV. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so I try to struggle with my parents to try to stay at home, not go to kindergarten all the time. <laughs> That's how it goes. I don't think any of us wanted to go to kindergarten. Yeah, it's so boring. Yeah, <laughs> And the food in kindergarten was not so good. <laughs> <laughs> the food, I can remember. It was bad. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And so... You remember kindergarten because the bad food and... <laughs> no, and also, uh, I I just want to stay at home to watch my favorite TV shows. I don't want to go to <laughs> kindergarten. And they forced me to sing something I don't like singing and to learn something I don't like to learn. And after lunch, they forced me to go to sleep to take a nap, but I never take a nap during the day. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be free. What was your favorite shows when you were that age? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, I like Tom and Jerry, <laughs> those American cartoon like Disney cartoon, like Mickey Mouse. That's awesome. Yeah, and some Japanese cartoon, like yeah. Ultraman. <laughs> Ultraman. Wow. Well, Tom and Jerry, that's a surprise. I, I love Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, we all love Tom and Jerry in China. Even my dad, he loves Tom and Jerry. Really? We always watch together. That's awesome. And then Ultraman, I've never heard of before. So. Yeah, Ultraman is a Japanese cartoon. It's always about a monster come to the town and destroy all the buildings, destroy the town. <laughs> so people was in a disaster, and then Ultraman just fly over here and then fight with the monster. After the monster was beaten, he f he goes away. Gotcha. Yeah. Sounds like we ought to have that one in America. <laughs> really? <laughs> what about... And you said you were eight years old, you moved to a place, Xiaomen? Yes. So it's a city uh, on the seaside. It's on the face to Taiwan Island. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's very beautiful. It's kind of like Garden City. And the downtown is on the island. Mm -hmm. And you can go to the beach. And there are so many beautiful mountains, beautiful landscaping. 
And a lot of people come to Xiamen for travel to visit. Really? Yeah. So it's got mountains in Scott Beach. Yes. And would is there any city in America you think that is, you kind of like similar? Um, maybe Seattle. I haven't been to that city, but when I see the map, Seattle is also like around the sea with the bay and on the island. So, yeah. I think yeah. Awesome. Would you guys go? Would you be at the beach a lot or? In Xiamen, yes. So. Uh, I remember, yeah, every month my family goes to the beach to f have fun, uh -huh. yeah, and wow. it's so, so beautiful, so cool. Awesome. And so, wow, you, you were there from? From A until 18, so I stayed 10 years in that city. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so beach has to be the best part about that. Huh? Uh no, <laughs> actually I like to go to some like old town. So there's some little street, uh, a lot of like little restaurants which are very uh, delicate and the food are very good. So I like to hang out in that places. Or the restaurants. Um, those are like small restaurants with seafood and some local special specialties. Yeah, so because I. I'm from northern part of China. The food in north and south part of China are very different. So when I firstly come to Xiamen, I was not very used to the food there. But mm -hmm. several years later, I fell in love with the food. Awesome. That's how. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is all... I've never been to China, so this is just like the highlights. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll invite you to my house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds yeah, I miss, I miss Xiamen. I feel like... Since I go to France for study, I haven't go back to Xiamen for like two or three years. And my mom told me that city just changed a lot. So I really miss home. Yeah. I want to go back and have a look. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, you just mentioned France and I was thinking about that. I mean, obviously right now we're in Utah, United States. Yeah. But you've lived in China and then you made your way to France and you lived there for a while before you even got here. So. What if we, you could just tell us, like, how did you end up in the United States? But there's a lot okay. in between. Yeah, so, so uh, I f when I finished my high school, there was an NGC who tried to connect the Chinese high school to university in France. So after, after I finished my high school, those NGC come to my high school. They do a presentation about, like, study in France. So my mom and I was very interested, and so we uh, we just decided to go to France, and we I went to Beijing because their hub is in Beijing. So no, not hub, the headquarter of the agency is in Beijing. So when gotcha. we went there to have like French language training for half a year, and then we got visa, mm -hmm. and then we go to France. So the first four months I went to France was in a little town called Han. It's in the west part of France. So we stayed there for another four months as language training before we get to go to college. And for college, I spent first two years in Strasbourg. Strasbourg is a city on the border of France and Germany. So this city was conquered by Germany during the World War II. So there is a strong influence of German culture. And for another two years, I went to Lyon. So it's in the southern part of France. It's, um, it's a city with like thousand years history. It's very beautiful. Wow. So when I went to Lyon, I, I made missionaries from the church. And then I went to church. And then I got to know BYU. And I feel like, OK, I, I like American culture. And I want to have an American experience. So that's why I decided to go to America and come to Utah. So if I did not be missionaries, I will never know people I have never come here. Wow, that is very unique. Probably not many people in the world have ever had that experience. Yeah. <laughs> so like, what, what would you say are some of the biggest differences between American culture and French culture? And then, yeah, we'll start right there. Okay, so... Culture is there's a lot of difference. Um, I feel like American, America is a big country, and 
there are people all around the world coming to America, so it's a melting pot of the culture. Mm -hmm. So I feel like American culture is more opening compared with the French culture. Mm -hmm. And American people are, are also more outgoing, easygoing compared with French people. So I remember once I was in Paris, I was waiting in the line to check in in a hotel, and there was an American guy standing in front of me. So during that time, that guy just like turned over his head to me and talked with me just randomly <laughs> about, oh, this is a nice bag. And then we started chatting. So I feel like, okay, American people are very like talkative. They like to talk, talk to people even though they don't know. But French people, they are nice. And if you need help, they are willing to help you. And, but I feel like they are kind of shy. It's like, um, unless you try to approach them or try to talk to them, they are very afraid of like talking with you. Not as open. No, no, not as open. But they yeah. are nice, yeah. If yeah. you need help, they are, they are very happy to help you. Uh, French culture, so... There are something very beautiful in French culture. Like, I remember... I miss uh, food in French. Yeah. <laughs> the food? Yes, yeah. French yeah, French food is very famous in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And also some uh skincare products in French are very good. They are cheap. They are very gentle and very comfortable when you use it. So when I come to America I cannot buy them anymore. And the price is doubled. <laughs> Can't buy what anymore? Oh uh, sorry. Uh skincare product. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, so the uh, moisture and, uh, how to say, lotion and cleanser in France yeah, yeah, yeah. are very good, cheap, mm. and very useful. That's something I wouldn't have guessed. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like when I come here, the same pr uh, same thing, just the price doubled. So <laughs> I don't prefer it anymore. Yeah, no more. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's something I learned recently about France, and you can tell me if this is true or false. Yes. Uh, my friend on his mission in France yeah. said that um, the word for wand... Yes. Well, first of all, he's, he really fell in love with baguettes, and he loves baguettes, and he can't stop talking about baguettes. <laughs> <laughs> he says the rumors are true. They, they do love baguettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there are a lot. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> in... How to say... Wait, how to say a, a, a shop you can buy dessert and... Uh, uh, bakery? Ba yeah, the bakery. Bakery. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so in all the bakery in France, you can buy, buy baguettes. There are all kind of baguettes. <laughs> Long, right. short. Yeah, and, and also in supermarket, you can buy baguette. And it's very cheap, like one box a baguette. And, and in France, during the meal, you always like eat meat, vegetables with baguette. So baguette is very essen essential for... A French uh -huh. dinner and lunch. Okay, because yeah. this is the rumor you hear. You, you this is not rumor, this is truth. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. But here's another thing that he said that I want to know if it's true. Is he said that there, the word for wand, like a magic wand, you wand. Know what a wand is? Like in Harry Potter, they use Yeah. Wand. He said the word for wand in French is interpreted as magic baguette. Oh, <laughs> oh, I I don't know. Yeah, I never heard about this term before. You but that up. yeah, I think so. Yeah, because baguette can be the baguette we eat, and also Chinese people eat with chopsticks, right? It's also oh. baguette in French. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just yeah maybe that. with a stick, long and thin is baguette. <laughs> I just can't stop thinking about baguettes. <laughs> Yeah, and actually baguette is very hard outside, but it's very soft inside, it's especially for fresh baguette. But if you buy a baguette, you put it there for two or three days, it just becomes a stick, so you can hit people with this baguette. <laughs> Chinese people, uh, I feel more comfortable with Chinese people because maybe <laughs> because of I'm Chinese and I'm good at speaking Chinese. Yeah, yeah so I really cannot talk about this very objectively. That's yeah, true. yeah, but I can from my point of view I feel like 
American culture is more comfortable, more suitable for me. Yeah, because I'm not very talkative neither. So if I'm sitting with the French people, okay, we're just going to like be calm, be quiet, <laughs> always <laughs> stay together. We will, we will have we will hardly talk to each other. Yeah, but I I didn't meet some people, some French people. They are very nice, very initiative and very helpful to me. And we are still very good friends. We still like talk to each other through Facebook some sometimes. Awesome. That's awesome. What do you what do you miss most of, of China? Yeah, so my family, my fa- my mom and dad, and my friends in China. I haven't like seen them for a long time, mm-hmm. and I also uh, I miss Chinese culture, mm-hmm. and I also miss Chinese food, and and also like, I feel like in recent years, the China has developed so fast. So I remember when I was in France, I go back to China every year. So every year I go back to China, there are something new. There are something different than before. So I remember uh, before I, I went to France, my parents, they don't know how to use a smartphone. But two years later, when I go back home, my dad, he know how to use Uber with a smartphone. I was so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. And also like, like uh, in America, we are trying to develop a mobile phone payment, like to pay with Apple Pay, with Samsung Pay. So we are still working on that in Europe and in France, but we still need to use cash or use credit card sometimes. But when I went back to China, we can just use a mobile phone and we can go all around. So we can just pay with our with our phone. So we don't need to bring our wallet. So I was so impressed with those wow. fast development. So I really like, feel like, okay, China is so different as before. Yeah. And I I was so sad. I just enjoyed this new technology for a few months. Then I come to America, <laughs> so I really miss this part. And I hope oh, yeah. like one day American can also like have those convenient things, high technology as in China. Wow, dang! I didn't realize we were so behind. <laughs> oh, you yeah. didn't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm telling everyone through this camera. <laughs> no. Uh. Okay. So. My suggestion is trying to keep an open mind and try to go around the world to see and do not constrain your life just within one group of people or within one region of the world. Try to go around to look and try to accept some new ideas. Mm-hmm. And this will help you in your future and in your ideology mm-hmm. and your perspective to see the world. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Who gets full with that? Oh. We can wrap it up. Thanks so much. Okay, for thanks here. for having me here. <laughs> <laughs>